Today, I want to talk about how the shorts are currently being squeezed as we speak, and how this will lead to a liquidity event crashing the market and causing the AMC squeeze. I also want to talk about how Ken Griffin seems to be a little bit desperate for cash, as he's resorted to renting out his own personal home. So stay tuned, and let's make some money. And now I'll dive straight in with the key information. So, Robert tweeted saying the shorts will be squeezed. Let's go apes. And Finance Lancelot tweeted saying bye bye liquidity. Right when everyone is max bullish and on vacation. So I want to talk about this video where a reporter has just recently interviewed a stockbroker at the CBOE stock exchange. He's basically talking how shorts are currently being liquidated in the wider market in stocks like Nvidia, Tesla, Microsoft and many others, but how this will lead to a coming liquidity event. As I'm going to explain that liquidity event is going to collapse liquidity by up to a trillion dollars over the next few months as the Fed is currently desperate to print more cash for the Treasury. Some people may call it a soft landing. I call it stagflation, right? At the end of the day, the Fed's in a box. They got a tough situation here that's bad for liquidity. Uh, that's overarching over the top, right? Uh, but in the meantime, uh, you know, markets, uh, people are short. Uh, you got a little bit of a, a vol squeeze going on. You're going to do a June OPEX, which is very important. There's a lot of open interest in those puts that drives all this buyback. Uh, for the next week and a half, people know that you know those flows are coming. You said the magic word, liquidity. And I know in my house, when the liquidity is bad in the kitchen sink, we get Drano, okay? Well, I think Janet Yellen's gonna have a Drano issue because many see as much as one to 1.6 trillion in bill issuance coming. But where is it going to come from? Draining the TGA at the end of the day is borrowing from the future. That's what we did. We pushed a bunch of liquidity into the system. It counteracted QT. But guess what? QT is still happening. And now those flows have to flow out the other way. Uh, oh, exactly. 1.4, 1.6 trillion coming out. That's direct you know, out of the veins of the market. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that's, that's it could a, come out of banks. It could come out of the reverse repo market. Correct. could come out of the money markets. But you're right. No matter where it comes from, the issue is the same. We need to replenish the Treasury general account, and we all know it's coming. It's coming. In the meantime, shorts are going to get squeezed. A lot of the time, the way these things end is with a blow-off top. So basically what that video is saying is that because over the last six months, the Fed has not issued new treasury bills, replenishing the treasury, all these big funds and big banks have been buying tons and tons of stocks instead, pushing the market up and squeezing those market wide shorts. But right now, the Fed needs to print one to $1.6 trillion in treasury bills to restash the treasury. And therefore, all these banks and large funds will need to sell off tons and tons of stocks to have cash available to buy these new treasury bonds. Right now, we're seeing the shorts being squeezed, which is going to end up in a blow off top, aka the market moving very much higher in the very short term before these shorts have finished being squeezed and all this liquidity is drained from the market, causing the next leg down in the market crash. And obviously, once these market wide shorts have been squeezed and then the market crashes, further bringing down their available cash to meet their margin requirements, it will liquidate these hedge funds, causing margin calls and causing more market wide squeezes, and obviously the AMC and GameStop squeezes as well. It says the Treasury TGA account is below $50 billion, and Treasury will surely look to get this back to at least $650 billion. And that means the Treasury is likely going to have to a trillion dollars in T-bills over the coming quarter to obviously restack that cash up to $650 billion and pay for all coming expenditure over the next month or two. And obviously, because the Fed currently isn't performing quantitative easing and buying their own Treasury bills, they'll need to sell these T-bills to somebody else, which is going to be these banks and hedge funds. And to buy a trillion dollars in Treasury bills, they're going to need to dump tons and tons of stocks. And specifically, the Treasury is dumping $170 billion worth of Treasury bills on the market today, Monday, June 5th. That's $150 billion in bonds that are going to be sold in one single day, meaning that today at least $150 billion worth of stocks need to be sold. And obviously printing money leads to higher interest rates, which leads to more bank explosions, and then obviously the squeeze. 
for now as Unusual Worlds has tweeted, it seems Jeff Bezos of Amazon and Lauren Sanchez are reportedly paying $600,000 a month to rent Ken Griffin's home. Guys, if you didn't already know, Moomoo are currently giving away one guaranteed free share of Tesla or of Google when you deposit the maximum amount on top of their usual 15 free shares. That could always be used to purchase more AMC or more Ape shares if you so desired. But on top of that, Moomoo is also incredibly easy to use. It's very clear and concise, and they also have entirely commission-free trading. Now, this is really interesting for two main reasons. Reason A is that of all people, Ken Griffin is deciding to rent his home out to Jeff Bezos. We know that Jeff and Ken Griffin are very, very close, which obviously re-supports some of my previous videos about how Ken Griffin is likely shorting AMC as well, or at least providing cash liquidity to Ken Griffin. But number two, it seems that Ken Griffin might actually be a little bit desperate for more cash. As Paper Tiger tweeted, wasn't Ken Griffin's monthly salary something like $30 million? If Ken Griffin was still earning 30 or $50 million per month, why would he need to rent out his own personal home? Maybe Ken Griffin has stopped taking any kind of drawings from Citadel if Citadel is desperate for cash, and he's now getting by on just $600,000 per month from renting out his own home. It's a bit weird that Ken Griffin is renting out his own personal home, as he shouldn't really need the money. I also thought this tweet from Roger Hamilton was really, really interesting. He said Australia is the latest country to take action against naked shorts. A former money manager has just received a three-year ban over naked short selling and ASIC asks hedge funds for trades amid naked shorts crackdown. The article says that hedge funds and investment banks are being ordered to produce documents to prove they're complying with short selling regulations. In particular, the Australian Securities and Investments Commission, aka ASIC, is concerned about short selling occurring without owning or borrowing the underlying shares, an illegal practice known as naked short selling. It also seems like Australia is even calling out the US by adding that unlike in Australia, some foreign markets allowed hedge funds to locate shares after putting on the trade and before settlement. And she said the regulator wanted to ensure there was no confusion that Australia requires cover in place before even putting on a trade. And this is also quite interesting. The guy that got banned for synthetic shorting in America found that Mr. Tol Piggan did so on 150 occasions, totaling over $7 million, spanning from January 19th to August 27th, 2021. So this guy was actually committing naked short selling offenses during the GameStop and AMC run-ups of 2021. But it is good to see at least one country cracking down on synthetic short selling, not just issuing teeny tiny fines, but actually banning employees from the market. And the reason why he was suspended and banned is because, as John Berda tweeted, Mr. Tolbikin's sales risked settlement failure in the event that he was unable to buy or locate the shares prior to settlement. For example, if the shares had been suspended from trading. As Kristen tweeted, she said this situation with MMTLP should have never occurred, as SEC Rule 10b-17 mandates that short sellers must close out of their short positions before a company goes private. This rule applies to all securities transactions, including short sales, and requires notice of the upcoming distribution to be given to all record holders as of the record day. Now, this is actually interesting for two main reasons. Reason number one, obviously MMTLP and its subsidiary ended up going private, and therefore all short should have closed out before the company was delisted. Now, obviously we know that's exactly what did not happen, and that's why the blue sheet data has been requested from FINRA. Now I'm gonna to touch on that blue sheet data in a second, but I also wanted to give the second reason as to why this is really, really interesting. So obviously Ape is converting into AMC, and the Ape conversion, I believe, actually falls under this SEC rule 10B-17. During the Ape conversion, Ape is effectively becoming a private company and merging with AMC, and therefore all shorts in Ape should close out prior to the Ape conversion. 
Now again, whether the shorts will actually close or whether the exact same thing will happen with Ape as what happened with MMTLP is so far yet to be seen. But I do hope that because of all this fuss and drama created with MMTLP, the shorts will actually close their Ape short positions prior to conversion. Now as Trading Secrets tweeted, they said in court, FINRA said the blue sheet data is complex and that it's difficult to understand and that FINRA does actually not routinely confirm the accuracy of that blue blue sheet data. So companies submit this blue sheet data to FINRA and FINRA doesn't even check the data is correct. Producing and reviewing blue sheet data would impose a significant burden upon FINRA, FINRA has said, and would redirect multiple staff away from regulatory work. So FINRA has basically just admitted in court that they don't even check the company's blue sheet data that's been submitted from these hedge funds and from these banks. I know FINRA is supposed to be a self-reporting, self-regulatory organisation, but it's absolutely ridiculous that they don't even check the data that's being reported. So these hedge funds like Citadel may even be reporting their synthetic shorting data, they may be accurately reporting that they're committing tons and tons of crimes, but FINRA doesn't even know about it because they don't even review what's been submitted. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell, because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.